Hey everyone, it's Debbie Deuce here from Home Pressure Cooking. And I thought I'd come on and chit chat for a bit while I'm making a cake. You guys can uh, keep me company. I'm making a Butterfinger cake today for my friend who actually shared this recipe with me from an old cookbook uh, that she was passed down from a church group. So it's pretty simple. It's absolutely delicious. It's probably one of my favorite cakes that I've ever made in the Instant Pot. And um, it's called a Butterfinger cake. And all you need for this cake is a yellow basic cake mix, um, some caramel ice cream topping, and a little sweetened condensed milk, but that goes on last. So right now all we're doing is mixing the cake, but I want you guys to see how easy and basic it is, okay? I'm gonna kind of turn this down a little bit. Um, I'm set up real casual today. I'm sitting at my counter, just chilling, and I just thought I'd come on and chit chat with you guys. So, any questions? Hi, Christy from Michigan, how are you? So again, one basic cake mix. I do have this recipe already printed on my um, home pressure cooking page, so you guys can check it out, but um, just keep me company and chit chat. Any questions you have? So here's the yellow cake mix. And what I'm gonna do is, according to the box, is exactly how I'm gonna mix it, except instead of using vegetable oil, I'm going to use a coconut cooking oil. These, this is really great in cakes. Hello, Kathleen from Kentucky. Thanks for joining me. Debbie Dews here from Home Pressure Cooking. You guys can let me know where you're from, how's the weather. It's hot as a blazins here. Even though I'm dying for fall, it doesn't seem like it's gonna come. So the cake mix calls for three eggs. which I'm doing, obviously. And then one third cup of vegetable oil, but like I said, I'm gonna use coconut cooking oil, which is fantastic in cakes. And it's better for you than vegetable oil. So these are little mixing cups. It says one third. A lot of people don't know that you can actually bake in the Instant Pot. Um, I find the cakes to be very moist, dense, and delicious. Hi from the Panhandle of Florida, Lisa, welcome. All right, so three eggs, one third cup of vegetable oil, but I used coconut oil, and then one cup of water. I also, I do not beat my cakes with an electric mixer. Um, I love using my spurtles. Uh, this is a great mixing tool. I sell them in a set of four. Hi from Swansea. Where is that? Where is Swansea? So I'm just going to um, mix this up real, real good. Hello, Jenny. Welcome. What I like about the spurtle is it gets all around the bowl. I don't like to use the hand mixer because I think the eggs get a little too fluffy. And I'm using my seven inch springform pan today. I'm gonna use the bunt portion, which I'm gonna show you guys um, how to insert that. I'm using my orange one because orange and blue are my favorite colors. And I made this one initially in the fall. So that's why I love using it now because I'm definitely itching for fall. Like I said, it's about 93 degrees here. Um, my younger son has band camp this week and it's outside from nine to nine. And uh, they call it the skillet. Hi from Arizona, how are you? So yeah, he's been coming home pretty exhausted and uh, heat waved. So I get the little cake mix chunks out. And just mix, mix, mix. Now you guys, most of you know how to do this. I know this is redundant, but I just want to show you. Um, 
you know, the process. Some people think that you have to change what's on the mix. Now, you do have to change the time that it calls for in the oven. Um, it doesn't take as long in the Instant Pot. Sometimes I just guess, and I have found my happy place for baking cakes is usually about 25 to 30 minutes, unless you have, you know, maybe fruit in there or, you know, bananas, then you might want to add in an extra minute or two. But if you haven't baked a cake in the Instant Pot, I would definitely recommend it. And I don't cover my cakes. That's always a big question as well. Do you cover it with tinfoil? No, I don't. Um, if you want to, you can. But I have found that any excess moisture, just I blot it out or I just let the cake cool and there's not a problem with sogginess or anything. Hi from Mississippi Pearl. Welcome, welcome. West Virginia. Hi, Allison. Thanks for joining me. Debbie Dew is here from Home Pressure Cooking. If it's your first time joining me, I like to come on spontaneously. I don't usually announce when I'm coming on. All right, so you see the spurtle did a pretty good job mixing that all up. Now I'm going to assemble my pan. Okay, I'm gonna use the bottom portion. The two-in-one pan comes with a flat for like your cheesecakes, your lasagnas, your taco pies, um, you know, a regular cake, whatever. The bun portion comes out with a pretty design, all right? So let's just tilt this down so y'all can see what I'm doing here. I don't wanna tilt it down too much. I'm just using a tripod, like I said, so it's a little tricky and you guys just keep falling. Let me pull it back a little. There, how's that? All right, so I take the fluted part and I'm gonna put it down but I want to show you, see that little ring, that um, indentation? That's the bottom of the pan. I've had many customers try to put it on the top and then they say, oh, it doesn't fit, it falls out. Well, because you're putting it on the wrong end. So that is pretty important. So I just flip mine upside down to have that seal or that outer ring on top. Then I take the flute portion down and I put it in. I make sure it hits that lip, okay? And then to make sure it's secure, you can just make sure it's locked. You see, it's not gonna come out. I always do the upside down test, all right? Um, I'm gonna get a little piece of foil and just wrap it on the outer bottom, just in case you do get a little leakage, it'll just go in the Instant Pot. But typically, I really doesn't have to be it. perfect, obviously. Now, a whole cake mix will fit in the seven inch pan. I like to use a little butter spray. And just coat it well so you get that design and on the sides. And then I'm just gonna add my cake mix evenly. I pour it in and it'll go right around and then I give it a little bit of a shake to make sure that it gets all nice and even. And I'm gonna bake this cake for 25 minutes. Um, I may come back on and show you the rest of the process because what I'm gonna do is use a straw and poke some holes on the bottom and add my condensed milk and the caramel that gets inside the cake. And it's just amazing. So that's all there is to it. And then what I usually do is put my cake on a trivet. My trivet. If your pot doesn't come with a trivet, I also carry these on Amazon, uh, but it has nice, heavy, durable handles. And then I put my pan on top. And then that's gonna go right in the Instant Pot. All right, I'm gonna add a cup of water to the pot. I've done this a thousand times, but if you're new here, now you'll know how to do a cake. And then I'm just gonna lower it in the pot. Make 
make sure it's on seal. I do manual, high pressure for 25 minutes. That's it. So anyone have any questions why I'm here? It doesn't have to be in reference to a cake. It could be regarding anything. Um, I'm always around on my page and in my Facebook group. You can find uh, Home Pressure Cooking in a private group. And, um, you know, we love swapping recipes and sharing tips and tricks. I have some amazing ladies in there that are very, very helpful. If I'm not around, they're always around to um, help you out. So I guess that's it, guys. I can come back on when it's done and show you how I'm going to do. It's like a poke cake. And I'm going to mix up a little uh, sweetened condensed milk and caramel. And then you just kind of drizzle it all over and let it sit just joining thanks michelle do you just do it i just did a basic cake mix i did a duncan Hines classic yellow i mixed it accordingly which is three eggs um, in lieu of the vegetable oil i used coconut but you know you don't have to i just think this is a better choice and it's really good in cakes too and then one cup of water and I mixed it by hand with one of my um, spurtle mixing tools. Um, I said that I don't like personally to whip up my cakes uh, in the ins or in the bowl with an electric mixer because I think the eggs get just a little too fluffy. And um, you know I'm only using a seven inch pan, so I want everything to to fit in there. And the cakes get high as it is, and I don't want them to get like a volcano. So. That's really it. I guess when it's done, I can come back on and show you. I do have this recipe on my home pressure cooking website. Um, just look up Butterfinger Cake and you will find it. Because yes, I do um, crunch up some Butterfingers and add Cool Whip on top. I'm actually making this for a friend today. She's the one that gave me the recipe and um, she said she's never made it before. It came from a church cookbook and I thought, I will surprise her. Hey guys, Debbie Dews here from Home Pressure Cooking and I am back with part two of the Butterfinger Cake. I took it out of the Instant Pot about 10 minutes ago and I started po poking the holes in it um, to add in my caramel and sweetened condensed milk. Uh, by the way, I do do a quick release on cakes, okay? So any cakes that you make you want a quick release because if you let it naturally release hi Kathy happy Friday to you if you let it naturally release the cake is still baking so you don't want that all right so 25 minutes was perfect on this cake mix I'm now going to take a straw can you guys see what I'm doing and I'm just poking some holes in it because that's how I'm going to Add in my caramel and my sweetened condensed milk. And just keep poking all around. I'm hoping I can show you how I flip it too. I'm just concerned that it's still warm because you want to put this caramel sweetened condensed milk while the cake is still warm. So basically, you're going to let your cake look like it's got the chicken pox, all right? The straw gets a little cake in there, so just squeeze it on out or eat it, whatever. I admit I have done that before. All right, so I think mine has lots of holes in it. And I took a little caramel syrup and sweetened condensed milk and I mixed the two of them together and just stirred it real good and then I'm going to pour it over the cake while it's still in the pan here okay just want to kind of drizzle and let it get in those holes the best you can it's kind of thick but it will get in there the more holes you make, the better. Now this cake is also best if chilled for at least a couple hours before you serve it because that caramel and a little bit of sweetness all sets in the cake real nice. I'm 
Okay. And I put a plate under mine just in case a little bit of the uh, leakage seeps through. And I also drizzle some on top of it. So can you see that? So basically it's a, it's a poke cake is what you're doing. Um, you know, some people uh, with poke cakes add in um, puddings and there's all kinds of things you can do. But with this one, the Butterfinger cake, it's just caramel and sweetened condensed milk, about half and half, half the can, which I didn't even actually use half the can this time. If I want to pour more on top, I'll make the combination again, all right? Let me feel this pan. It's still warm. What I am going to do, though, is at least release it from the spring form. And then I'll let it cool like that before. So that's what it looks like when it comes out of the spring form pan. See all that sauce that's just drizzling on the sides. But as you can see, it's baked. Woo! It's baked to perfection. We almost lost it there. My friend would have been devastated. I've been telling her I'm going to bake her a cake all week. I think we can flip it. I'm going to take a chance. Heck, if we have a blooper, why, why not make it a good one, right? All right, so I'm going to take this other plate. I have it on a plate. And I'm going to flip it over. And then I'm going to remove the top ever so gently. Perfect. It is, it is still warm, so I did get a little crack, but once I put my frosting, which is going to be a little bit of Cool Whip, and Butterfinger. I'm just using little bars that I refrigerated beforehand. So what I'm gonna do is kind of crunch them down. Can you guys see what I'm doing here? If I tilt this little tripod, I might lose you. So you just want those nice and crumbly. And then what I'm going to do is take my Cool Whip, and I'm actually going to just put it in the center, fill up the middle of it for now. Okay. And I'm going to take a little bit of the excess caramel. Kind of drizzle that all around. And then I'm going to take the butter fingers, do it over the cake because I just crumbled them all up. Two little bars will do ya. I think I bought a big package of them, and my son's been eating them too. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a, one that I didn't refrigerate, sorry guys, and I'm gonna add it on top, just kind of hole in the Cool Whip. And now I'm gonna refrigerate this cake. But there it is, Butterfinger cake. All right, guys, I'm gonna refrigerate it for a couple hours. And like I said, the more 
caramel and sweetened condensed milk you add, the more moist it's gonna get. But that's it guys, you saw how simple that was and it is, it's a beautiful presentation. My friends are going to be Something thrilled. I've slaved all day doing, uh, when literally it, it's been like 45 minutes from start to finish to have this gorgeous, delicious looking cake. All right, so thanks again for joining me. If you missed part one, go check it out. Debbie Dew is here from Home Pressure Cooking.